Welcome to the SBCA Podcast Component Connection. Looking at how businesses around the country are innovating to take advantage of opportunities in the construction supply chain. Now, here's your host, Sean Shields. Welcome, everyone. On today's podcast brought to you by the Structural Building Components Association, which is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year, we are going to talk about incentives. Getting your employees to do everything you wish they could do is difficult. Sometimes they need a little motivation. Joining me today is Mark Ross, Director of Manufacturing for Next Gen Building Components in Rochester, New York. We're going to talk a little bit about incentives. Mark, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. I'm excited. Let's dive right in. I'm hoping we can start by having you share a little bit about NextGen. I'm not sure many of our listeners have heard of you guys. Can you briefly explain the company's business model, your product lines, your customer mix, that kind of thing? Yeah. So NextGen is a building components company just outside of Rochester. They've been in business for about seven years. We originally were in the roof truss building with our lumber yard and spun off and started building components branch. Primarily, we service professional, commercial, residential, and remodelers. 60% of our business is commercial, 40% being residential. And that's really changed over the last four to five years. Okay. <clears throat> and you do roof trusses, wall panels, floor trusses, the whole thing? Yeah, you're correct. Excellent. All right. So I'm assuming... Like panels, floor trusses, is that primarily sort of your commercial, your multifamily, that kind of thing? Or do you do? Yeah. So, so primarily floors, roofs, and panels, 60% of that work is commercial panels and floors. We have quite a bit of townhome work that we do. Mm -hmm. And then roofs, there's probably 40% of that work is residential and that that is sold out of our lumber yard. And for your home builders, is that custom homes or do you have some of the large national builders or is it just some smaller regionals? Mo- mostly it's it's residential, some custom homes. There's not a lot of regional builders in our area. Okay. So now you are relatively new to the component manufacturing industry. Let's have you also share sort of your background and how you sort of gained experience in this topic we're going to cover, which is employee incentive programs. So I came from the granite countertop industry. I worked there for about 18 years, worked for another small family-owned company before that. And throughout the years, we we did a lot of different incentive programs. During the pandemic, obviously, we got very good at running a good incentive because it was retention, finding people. During the pandemic, there, there was not the workforce that we needed. So we had to incentivize the workforce that we had to one, retain them, and two, to get the work out the door that that we were trying to do with half as many people. It's always a challenge to to reach the goals that you set before you and sort of take advantage of the op- the business opportunities that are out in the marketplace, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So let's dive a little deeper into some of your experiences with incentive programs outside of the component manufacturing industry. So at its core, from your perspective, what is the goal of putting an incentive out there. Why is that different than just bumping up an employee's hourly rate or pushing for more overtime or better benefits or anything like that? How do you look at an incentive program? Well, I look at it one way or another, you're going to budget for whether it's an incentive or putting it in somebody's paycheck. And I really believe that within an organization, there's only 10% of the people that are working on the floor that can make that, that have the triggers to make move the needle. And sometimes when you're incentivizing, you could be incentivizing just managers, leads, shipping and receiving, installers. It really depends what you're trying to get out of your incentive program. I think that the incentive, rather than putting in their paycheck, it gives you the opportunity to put a financial focus on what your problems are within your business or what triggers you need to pull. If in my end, in the industry of granite, remakes was a big thing. Remakes in, in exotic granite, a lot of times it was just human error. And you try to tell people, hey, we got to be more careful with the material. And just 
it would always come to, well, it's a natural product. And what was what's kind of interesting is a lot of times when we incentivized, if we stay under this level of remix, we'll give each employee whatever the amount was. And it not only at the end of the month, it gave them a little money in their pocket. It also set the bar that they didn't even know they were setting. Now they've mm-hmm. set their own bar that, hey, it's possible. It's not me as the manager saying, hey, you need to get this done. And they're like, oh, that's impossible. At this point, they've set that bar because they want to achieve that incentive. So I think that's really the difference between the incentive and putting it in their paycheck. Mark, what strikes me as you're saying that is another piece of this is that the incentive program draws awareness, uh, employee awareness, at what the core problem is, right? Absolutely. And so because they're so focused on that and they themselves learn how to basically resolve that problem to reach the goal, that can be one of the powers of that incentive program. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Okay. So when you are developing an incentive program in your previous career, how did you set that up to know that you would be successful at getting the outcome that you desired? I mean, you're focusing the employee on this thing, but like, how do you know that incentive is going to be effective? Well, it's really getting the right people involved that not only can affect the outcome, but you know, you've got to have your cheerleaders in there. You have to have your people that are motivated that want to make it happen and want to make a difference. A lot of times when employees, when you bring out an incentive, a lot of times the employees on the floor don't really know that was a problem. And shame on us for not making sure that they know that. But when you bring things to light like that, they're like, oh, wow, I can make a difference. So there's also that feel good portion of it for them as well. So one of the biggest things with me, and this is really where I've been at NextGen, is setting up a good base of metrics so that every month you can see, okay, where are we struggling right now? And being able to attack that area and have metrics that has been that you've tracked over a year, two years, or three years, or five years, so that when you go into that incentive plan, that you know you're going to have a good to honest outcome. And, and it's got to be shareable data with the people on the floor, because win or lose, they need to understand the outcome, whether they got it or they didn't, and why. Mark, I want to back up a little bit, because I think you said something very powerful earlier on, which was that in a lot of cases, you're looking at 10% of your employee base that can move the needle, right? That can really, I guess, be a catalyst for everyone else. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Like how then do you incorporate that concept into how you set up your incentive program then? So a lot of times you find that you always have those people that when you talk to them, they're like, yeah, no problem. We can get this done. We can make that happen. And then you have the mixture of people that were like, well, I'd love to do that, but I think it's in pot. You've got the negative side. And really, I think getting the right mix of people involved in it, picking some of the people on the floor within that 10% to be the ones that are kind of the referees for that incentive and involving them in the results as well. And, And that way, it works out that they're helping push the needle. They're helping to take the other people that may not be the strongest links and pulling them into this incentive program. One, it creates teamwork. And two, it gives them that empowering feeling that they felt like they were the one that helped move the needle, that they create, they helped create that culture. I want to get a little bit more into how you think about and approach metrics sort of in the next episode. But let's say you, you've collected your metrics, you've determined the incentive program that you want to put in place, you've identified your 10% champions, those people you're going to go after, try to motivate to, to move the needle, and you implement this thing. How do you determine if the incentive program is successful? And, and I guess the follow-up to that is, what do you do if it fails? So that's a really good question because so many times what people do is when there's an incentive put in place win or lose, at the end of the incentive, you've got to pull everybody together. And sometimes you'll look at an incentive and you're like, wow, they were so close. And you get everybody involved and say, you know what, let's make this happen for them. Or it's not a bad thing to run the same incentive next month. Because 
you know, if they're that close and they can push that needle a little bit more and they can get that incentive, it's a win-win for both sides. So it, it isn't one of those things where you absolutely have to hit your goal the first time you try the incentive program, but it's really tracking, did we move the needle at all? How much did we move the needle? Because then you're evaluating, was this incentive targeted at the right thing? Did we pick the right champions? Did we roll it out the right way? There's a lot of introspection to that, right? You have to sort of yeah. evaluate every aspect of the in- incentive program. Because if it didn't work, you got to identify why, right? Yeah, and, it's, and the other thing is, too, is creating a baseline of metrics that is shareable, right? So, so we can't go and share in the whole p and with everybody in the shop. But if we create metrics that you can go back and say, look, guys, you guys have been running at this level for a long time. This is totally achievable. And look at this one week. You guys are right there. And a lot of times what also does is it gets me more engaged and going out and helping them, helping them push the needle. It's kind of a form of cheating, I guess, a little bit. But I know in the long term that it will help for them to understand that we win, we fail together. And when we win, now we've set the new bar. They don't always like to hear that, but you know, at the end of it, that's why it's so important to review the results of it. You say, well, look guys, you guys produced more last week or last month or the last quarter than you've ever produced. We, we gotta, we, whatever we came up with to make this happen this month, We've got to incorporate that into our day-to-day process to keep that momentum rolling. And what you're saying there, Mark, is that part of this is opening their eyes to the what's possible, what they're capable of, right? Sometimes they don't know what they're capable of until they're pushed to achieve it. Yeah, absolutely. It, that, and that's one of the biggest things. If you go out there and say, hey, I want you to do a million board feet in a day, they're going, yeah, okay. But then you dangle a carrot and they hit a million board feet and you're like, see, it was possible. And that was a win-win for everybody. Now we know the capabilities of the facility and we know the capabilities of the employee if they direct the efforts in the right direction. So Mark, I guess that makes me curious. Can you do an incentive program poorly? I mean, what's the outcome if you completely mess it up? Oh, we they, when you completely mess that up, that unravels morale like you've never had seen in your whole life a lot of times what will happen is you do an incentive and you know it's you're kind of disappointed that we didn't hit the incentive and nobody says anything to the employees they just move on like it never happened life goes on and all of a sudden it turns into well management fixed it and that's why we didn't hit it they never mentioned it they just forgot about it so at the end of the incentive win or lose you have to sit down have a meeting with everybody involved and say, look, we were close, but we missed the mark. We're going to do it again next month. We're not going to do it. And the other thing is, too, is I always call it the referee. It's always good to have somebody that's in the plant that's just an outgoing guy that you know has your back and, and wants to be part of more than just being on the floor. And that's your referee. That's somebody that is looking at the metrics with me every day and saying, oh, geez, yeah, we, we need to do this or we should try that. So that throughout the month, everybody knows how they're doing every day. So at the end of the month, it's not a total surprise that they didn't hit the, the goal. Well, and really what you're saying is that part of the incentive program is knowing what you want to do. Part of the incentive program is setting the right incentive, right, to motivate that 10%, the the people that are going to move the needle. And then the the other big part of this is the constant communication with the employees about hit or missed expectations and sort of an understanding of what's going to happen if we don't hit this. You don't, we're not just going to throw our hands up and walk away from you guys. Like we're going to figure this out and maybe we'll move the bar a little bit to, to target that incentive a little bit differently or whatever it is. Yeah. And I've had incentives where, you know, after we, we rolled it out, after I saw that there was no way we were going to hit it, went to the ownership and said, look, I kind of shot short on this one and it's just going to create havoc. And at the end of the month said, Hey, you know what? You guys gave it your all and you came very close. We're going to pass out. We're going to hand out the incentive anyways. Mm. And you did that. Yeah, absolutely. Because again, kind of to your point, doing it poorly is saying, oh, we didn't hit it and just walking away, right? 
it's if you're investing in this incentive program approach, you really have to be all in on it as the employer. Yeah, definitely. Well, Mark, I want to explore a little bit more how you went about creating your metrics and how you sort of implemented some of these programs in greater depth in our next episode. But I think the last question I have for you is, in your experience, as you succeeded and failed with these incentive programs, you clearly never gave up on them. So I have to believe that as a whole, you found these to be sort of a very successful approach to fixing targeted things, right? Absolutely. One of, one of the things is it was even in, as a manager, it was bragging rights to me as well. You do an incentive, say on remakes or whatever it might be. And at the end of the month, you looked at, okay, you handed out five grand, you handed out 10 grand. In the grand scheme of things, you save the company $30,000, whether it be remakes, whether it be on payroll, whatever it might be. It's also an incentive program for myself as well for to see the guys succeed and to see the company succeed. And it's a win-win at that point. Mm-hmm. If the company can move the needle and the employee can get a little incentive here and there, I, it's just a win-win all the way around. Excellent. Well, Mark, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. If you've enjoyed what you've heard, please give this podcast a favorable rating and share it with others. Also, consider subscribing to SPCA's Component Connection podcast on whatever platform you use most. That way, you'll immediately know when we publish our next podcast. On our next episode, Mark and I will talk about how to build a successful incentive program. This has been a Component Connection podcast. Brought to you by SBCA. If there's a topic you'd like us to cover in a future episode, send it to podcast at sbcacomponents.com.